following is a recorded lecture by the Nova Sheikh, Sheikh Salih Fawzan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala. In this lecture, he discusses the story between Adam alayhi salam and Iblis. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد قصة آدم وإبليس تكرر ذكرها في القرآن الكريم للعبرة والاتعاظ بما حصل في هذه القصة لآدم وما حصل لإبليس In the name of Allah the most gracious, the most merciful. All praises belong to Allah and may the peace and blessings be upon the messenger Muhammad and upon his family and those who follow him. As to what follows, the story of Adam and Iblis has been repeated over and over in the Quran to serve as a lesson and reflection as to what occurred in this story, what occurred to Adam alayhi salam and what occurred to Iblis. فإن الله سبحانه لما كرم آدم فضله على الملائكة بالعلم وأسكنه الجنة هو وزوجه حسده إبليس وتكبر عليه لما أمر الملائكة بالسجود لآدم إكراما له وطاعة لله سبحانه وتعالى فالسجود إنما هو طاعة لله وعبادة لله وفيه إكرام لآدم وإظهار لشرفه وفضله عليه الصلاة والسلام Verily when Allah سبحانه وتعالى honored Adam and prefer him over the angels in terms of knowledge and he calls him to reside in paradise, him and his wife, Iblis became envious of him and became arrogant towards him. So when the angels were commanded to bow down to Adam as a respect towards him and in obeying the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as bowing down to him was nothing other than obeying the commandment given to them by Allah. And it was worship of Allah. And it contained in it a showing of respect to Adam alayhi salam and to make apparent his nobility and his virtue. تكبر إبليس وأبى أن يسجد وقال أنا خير منه خلقتني من نار وخلقته من طين ولم يعلم أن الطين خير من النار لأن الطين ينبت النباتات الطيبة وينتج وينفع نفعا كثيرا وأما النار فهي محرقة والعياذ بالله لا تنتج وإنما تحرق فالطين خير من النار وإبليس يرى أن النار خير من الطين ولذلك افتخر بأصله مع أن الافتخار بالوصول لا يجوز إنما الافتخار يدل على التكبر حتى في العبادة والصلاح لا يفتخر الإنسان بل يتواضع لله عز وجل ولا يفتخر ولا يتكبر كل هذا حصل من إبليس إبليس became arrogant and refused to bow down and he said I am better than him you created me from fire and you created him from clay or soil and he did not know that in reality soil is better than fire because from soil comes good vegetation it grows and is produced from it, and it yields many benefits. As for fire, then it is a destroyer, and with Allah refuge is sought. It is not produced, rather it only burns. Thus soil is better than fire. But Iblis viewed fire as being better than soil, and as a result he was proud of his origin, despite the fact that boasting about one's origin is not permissible. Boasting is a sign of arrogance. Even when it comes to worship and prayer, the person cannot be arrogant, rather it is upon him to humble himself for Allah. Do not boast or become arrogant, and all of this came from Iblis. 
ومع هذا لم يتب إلى الله عز وجل وإنما احتج بالقدر فقال لربه بما أغويتني فنسب الإغوى إلى الله عز وجل ولم ينسبه لنفسه ولم يعترف بذنبه In addition to this Iblis did not repent to Allah Rather he used the divine decree as an excuse So he said to his Lord Because you have led me astray Thus he placed the blame upon Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala For his going astray And he did not place the blame upon himself Nor did he acknowledge his own sins Amma Adam alayhi salam Fa inna u'tarafa bi dhanbih Wa staghfara rabbah أتاب الله عليه قال ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين تلقى آدم من ربه كلمات فتاب عليه إنه هو التواب الرحيم As for Adam عليه السلام then he acknowledged his sins and he sought forgiveness from his Lord Thus Allah accepted his repentance. Adam alayhi salam and his wife Hawa or Eve, they said, O oh our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. If you forgive us not and bestow not upon us your mercy, we shall surely be of the losers. Chapter at araf verse number 23. And Allah says what can be translated as, Then Adam received from his Lord words. And his Lord pardoned him and accepted his repentance. Verily, he is the one who forgives and accepts repentance, the most merciful. Suratul Al Baqarah, verse number 37. Amma Iblis, fainahu lam yatu. Wahtajja ala rabbih azza wa jal. Wala yuhtajju bil qadar ala al maasi wal mukhalafat. Wa inama yuhtajju bil qadar ala al masaib. فإذا أصابت الإنسان مصيبة يعلم أنها بقضاء الله وقدره فيصبر ولا يجسع ويحاسب نفسه على خطئه لأنه ما أصابته مصيبة إلا بسبب من من نفسه ما أصابكم من مصيبة فبما كسبت أيديكم ويعفو عن كثير. As for Iblis, then he did not repent. Rather, he disputed with his Lord. And the divine decree cannot be used as an excuse for sins and deviance. Rather, the divine decree can only be used in reference to calamities. Thus, if the person is afflicted with a calamity, then he knows that this is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he is patient and he does not fall apart. And he takes himself to account for his sins. Because no calamity has befell him except because of him. As Allah says what can be translated as, Whatever befalls you from calamities, then it is because of what your hands have earned, and he pardons much. وهذا الذي حصل من آدم عليه السلام إنه اعترف بذنبه واستغفر ربه وعلم أن هذه المصيبة إنما حصلت له بسبب الذنب. فتاب إلى الله عز وجل فتاب الله عليه. And this is what occurred with Adam عليه السلام. He acknowledged his sin and he sought forgiveness from his Lord and he knew that this calamity only befell him due to sin. So he repented to Allah and Allah accepted his repentance. وهذه القصة عجيبة جدا تدل على أن من تاب إلى الله ولو عظمت ذنوبه فإن الله يتوب عليه وأن من أصر ولم يتوب إلى الله وخاصم ربه بالقضاء والقدر and this story is amazing. It proves that whoever repents to Allah, even if his sins are numerous, Allah will accept his repentance. And whoever persists upon sin and does not repent to Allah and disputes with his Lord using the divine decree, then Allah becomes angry with him. وقال لما أخرجتنا من الجنة فآدم عليه السلام احتج بالقدر لأن هذه مصيبة والاحتجاج بالقدر على المصائب جائز 
And when Musa alayhi salam met his father Adam alayhi salam, he blamed him and he said, Why did you cause us to be expelled from paradise? So Adam alayhi salam disputed with him using the divine decree because this was a calamity and it is permissible to use the divine decree in reference to calamities. Wa أما الاحتجاج بالقضاء والقدر على المعاصي فهو لا يجوز هذا شأن إبليس هو الذي احتج بالقضاء والقدر على المعصية وأما آدم فإنه اعترف بالذنب وتاب ولكنه احتج بالقضاء والقدر على المصيبة أنها من عند الله قال تعالى ما أصاب من مصيبة إلا بإذن الله ومن يؤمن بالله يهدي قلبه as for using the divine decree as an excuse for sins, then this is not permissible. This was the condition of Iblis. He is the one who used the divine decree as an excuse for sins. As for Adam alayhi salam, then he acknowledged his sins and he repented. But he used the divine decree in reference to the calamities. It was from Allah. As Allah says, what can be translated as, no calamity befalls except by the will of Allah. And whoever believes in Allah, then he will guide his heart. قال علقمة هو الرجل تصيبه المصيبة فيعلم أنها من الله فيرضى ويسلم. علقمة said concerning this verse, this is a person who is afflicted by a calamity, and he knows that it is from Allah, so he is pleased with it, and he submits to the decree of Allah. قال تعالى وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون. Allah says what can be translated as and give glad tidings to the patient. Those who were afflicted with a calamity they say verily from Allah we come and to him we shall return. فالمسلم لا يجزع عند المصيبة ولا يسخط عند المصيبة وإنما يرضى بقضاء الله وقدره ويسترجع ويقول إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون ويعلم أن ما أصابه لم يكن ليخطئه وما أخطأه لم يكن ليصيبه كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فلا جزع ولا سخط وإنما الإنسان يلوم نفسه ويتوب إلى الله ويستغفر من ذنوبه ويعلم أن ما أصابه إنما هو بسبب ذنوبه فيتوب إلى الله عز وجل ويستغفر ومن تاب تاب الله عليه. Therefore the believer does not fall apart when a calamity befalls him and he does not become angry. Rather he is pleased with the divine decree of Allah and he says Verily from Allah we come, and to him we shall return. And he knows that whatever befell him was not going to miss him, and whatever he missed out on was not going to befall him, as was mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Thus he does not fall apart, nor does he become angry. Rather the person only blames himself, and he repents to Allah, and he seeks his forgiveness for his sins. And he knows that the calamity that befell him is only due to his sins. So he repents to Allah Azawajal and seeks his forgiveness. And whoever repents to Allah, then Allah will accept their repentance. وباب التوبة مفتوح إلى أن تبلغ الروح الغرغرة عند الموت فحينئذ لا تقبل التوبة ممن تاب. And the door of repentance is open until the soul reaches the point where the person begins to choke upon it. And this is at the time of death. So at this time, the repentance will not be accepted from the one who repents. فما دام الإنسان على قيد الحياة متمكن من من الطاعة ومن العمل ومن التوبة، فإن التوبة مقبولة عند الله سبحانه. But as long as the person is alive, able and determined. To be obedient and to do righteous actions and to repent, then the repentance is accepted with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who have done a wrong thing or have 
ذكروا الله استغفروا لذنوبهم من يغفر الذنوب إلا الله ولم يصروا على ما فعلوا وهم يعلمون أولئك جزاؤهم مغفرة من ربهم وجنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها ونعم أجر العاملين As Allah says in chapter number 3 verses 135 and 136 what can be translated as and those who when they have committed shameful acts or wronged themselves with evil they remember Allah and they seek his forgiveness for their sins and none can forgive sins except for Allah and they do not persist in what wrong they have done while they know for such the reward is forgiveness from their Lord and gardens with rivers flowing underneath wherein they shall abide forever how excellent is the reward for the doers of good قال سبحانه وتعالى ومن يعمل سوءا أو يظلم نفسه ثم يستغفر الله يجد الله غفورا رحيما and Allah says what can be translated as whoever does evil or wrongs himself then seeks Allah's forgiveness he will find Allah to be the all forgiver the most merciful وقال سبحانه إنما التوبة على الله للذين يعملون السوء بجهالة ثم يتوبون من قريب فأولئك يتوب الله عليهم وكان الله عليما حكيما And Allah says in chapter number 4 verse 17 what can be translated as Allah only accepts the repentance of those who do evil in ignorance and foolishness and repent soon afterwards it is they to whom Allah will forgive and Allah is ever the all-knower, the all-wise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaghfiru al-dhunuba liman ta'ab, ghafir al-dhanb, qabil al-tawb, shadid al-iqab, al-lazhi la yatub, amamahu al-iqab al-shadid, wal-lazhi yatub, amamahu al-maghfirah wal-rahmah, min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah forgives the sins of those who repent. Allah is the forgiver of sin, the acceptor of repentance, the one who is severe in punishment, and the one who bestows favors. So the one who does not repent, he has waiting for him a severe punishment. As for the one who repents, then he has waiting for him forgiveness and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يقع في الخطايا كلكم خطا وخير الخطائين التوابون ولكن الشأن في الذي يتوب إلى الله. And man is not free from error. He is going to fall into sin. All of you are sinners, and the best of the sinners are those who repent. So the consideration or the point is that the person repents to Allah. ولا يقنط من رحمة الله ويقول إنه لا يغفر لي. أنا كثير الذنوب أنا كثير المعاصي ويستبعد المغفرة فلا يتوب إلى الله Do not despair from the mercy of Allah Do not say He is not going to forgive me I have a lot of sins I have a lot of evil deeds Thus the person views his being forgiven as unlikely So therefore he does not repent to Allah قل يا عبادي الذين أشرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وأنيبوا إلى ربكم وأسلمون Allah says in chapter 39 verses 53 and 54 what can be translated as say O my slaves who have transgressed against themselves by committing evil deeds and sins do not despair of the mercy of Allah verily Allah forgives all sins truly he is the all forgiven the most merciful and turn in repentance and, and obedience with true faith to your Lord and submit to him. فعلى المسلم أن يتوب إلى الله ولو كثرت ذنوبه ولو عظمت ذنوبه فإنه لا يقنط من رحمة الله ولا ييأس من روح الله بل عليه أن يتوب والله فتح بابه للتائبين ينزل كل ليلة سبحانه وتعالى إلى سماء الدنيا حين يبقى ثلث الليل الآخر فيقول هل من سائل فأعطيه هل من مستغفر فأغفر له 
هل من تائب فاتوب عليه وذلك في كل ليلة So it is upon the Muslim to repent to Allah even if his sins are numerous even if his sins are great he cannot despair from the mercy of Allah he cannot lose hope of Allah's mercy rather it is upon him to repent to Allah as Allah Ta'ala has opened up the door of repentance for those who repent he descends every night to the lowest heavens when there only remains one third of the night and so he says is there anyone who will, who will ask of me so that I may give him what he is asking for is there anyone who is seeking my forgiveness so that I may forgive him is there anyone who is repenting to me so that I may accept their repentance and this happens every night <coughs> وهذا من آكد أوقات التوبة وإلا فالتوبة مطلوبة في كل لحظة وفي كل وقت من ليل أو نهار وباب التوبة مفتوح ولا يغلق إلا حين تخرج الشمس من مغربها وباب التوبة مفتوح للعباد الليل والنهار And this time is from the best times to seek forgiveness but seeking forgiveness should be sought all the time day and night and the door for repentance is open and it will not close until the sun rises from the west the door of repentance is open for the slaves day and night من تاب الى الله بصدق ونية صادقة تاب الله عليه وغفر ذنوبه وكفر عنه سيئاته and whoever repents to Allah with sincerity and having a good intention Allah will accept his repentance and forgive him of his sins and remove his sins. And repentance is not just with the tongue. Seeking forgiveness is not only with the tongue. Rather, when one repents to Allah, it is done with the tongue, the heart, and the actions. He repents and he rectifies himself. And he returns to Allah and he rectifies his actions. So Allah will accept his repentance. Even the disbeliever and the pagan, if they repent to Allah, Allah will accept their repentance. As Allah Ta'ala says in chapter number 8, verse number 38, what can be translated as, Say to those who have disbelieved, if they cease from their disbelief, the past will be forgiven. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala يغفر لمن تاب إليه والتوبة تجب ما قبلها فلا ييأس الإنسان ولا يقنط ويكثر من التوبة كل ما تاب كل ما أذنب يتوب ولا يقول أنا أنا أذنبت وتبت ثم رجعت وليس لي توبة هذا من الشيطان فيكرر التوبة كل ما تكرر منه ذنب ويستغفر من ربه عز وجل Allah forgives those who repent to him and repentance wipes away that which came before it so the person cannot despair or lose hope. Rather, they must increase in repenting. Every time they sin, they must seek forgiveness. And they should not say, I sinned, and then I repented, and then I returned to the sin again. Therefore, I cannot repent again. This is from Satan. Thus, he must repeat the repentance every time he repeats the sin. And seek forgiveness from your Lord Azza wa Jal. لا يعلم بها العبد فعليه أن يتوب ويكثر من التوبة والاستغفار كما كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يكثر من التوبة والاستغفار كان صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول يا أيها الناس توبوا إلى ربكم فإني أتوب إلى الله في اليوم أكثر من سبعين مرة And the person falls into sins and has shortcomings that he is not even aware of Therefore it is a must that he repents to Allah and increases in his seeking forgiveness just as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to seek forgiveness very often and he said O people repent to your Lord because verily I repent to Allah more than 70 times a day 
وكان الصحابة يحثون له صلى الله عليه وسلم في المجلس الواحد أكثر من مئة مرة أستغفر الله وأتوب إليه وهو رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم And the companions would count from him that he would seek forgiveness in one gathering more than 100 times saying O oh Allah I seek your forgiveness and I repent to you and he was the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فالإنسان مقصر في حق الله والاستغفار والاستغفار يرقع هذا الخلل وهذا النقص and man is deficient concerning the rights of Allah so seeking forgiveness and repenting it compensates for this deficiency and shortcoming فيكثر الإنسان من الاستغفار ومن التوبة إلى الله وإذا علم ذنبا من ذنوبه أحدث له توبة توبة صادقة وأبدل وأبدل ذلك بالعمل الصالح إلا الذين تابوا وأصلحوا يتوب ويصلح يصلح خطأه ويصلح ذنوبه أما أنه يتوب بلسانه ولا يصلح أعماله ولا يتراجع عما هو عليه فهذه توبة الكذابين أسأل الله العافية اللهم تب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وافر لنا إنك أنت الغفور الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Thus the person must increase in his seeking forgiveness and repenting to Allah When he knows that he is sinning he must repent and seek Allah's forgiveness a sincere repentance and follow it up with righteous actions Those who repent and rectify meaning they rectify their mistakes and their sins. As for repenting with the tongue only while not rectifying his actions and he does not return or leave off the wrong he is doing, then this is the repentance of the liars. We ask Allah for his safety and security. O oh Allah, accept our repentance. Verily you are the all-forgiver, the most merciful. O oh Allah, forgive us. For verily you are the forgiver and the one who is full of mercy. And we ask for Allah's peace and blessings to be upon the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and those who follow them.